Welcome to the Impact Library. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The 2024 presidential race was buzzing with shocking claims. One claim, propagated by Trump and J.D. Vance, accused Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, of stealing and eating pets. This outrageous accusation spread like wildfire through conservative media, fueled by xenophobia. In an age of rampant misinformation, it's crucial to pursue truth and hold power accountable. The pet-eating rumor exploited xenophobic tropes, painting immigrants as dangerous outsiders. Understanding and debunking false narratives helps us become discerning consumers of information. Our mission is to unravel the lies about the Haitian migrant community in Springfield, Ohio. We aim to expose the truth and challenge xenophobia and discrimination. Join us in this journey to bring the truth to light. The rumor began in the depths of the internet, fueled by prejudice and distrust. A single post about Haitians eating a cat spread like a virus, amplified by right-wing blogs. The baseless claim seeped into the mainstream, stoking fear and division. Right-wing media personalities amplified the pet-eating rumor for ratings and clicks. Trump and Vance used the rumor to exploit racial anxieties and promote nativist policies. Their pronouncements, devoid of evidence, were met with cheers from supporters. The pet-eating rumor, despite its absurdity, clung to the public consciousness. It relied on a single, unverified anecdote and harmful stereotypes about immigrants. The rumor sought to create fear and distrust, paving the way for discriminatory policies. The pet-eating rumor was a calculated tactic in a broader political strategy. Trump and Vance tapped into anxieties about immigration to mobilize their base. The rumor's emotional impact was exploited for political gain. The rumor's impact on the Haitian community in Springfield was devastating. It created a climate of fear and suspicion, transforming a welcoming community. The human cost of disinformation is undeniable, eroding trust and fueling division. Springfield found itself at the epicenter of a manufactured crisis. The rumor poisoned relationships and eroded community bonds. City officials had to combat misinformation that threatened their community. Local authorities in Springfield countered the misinformation with facts. The police and city manager issued clear statements rejecting the pet-eating rumor. Their messages provided a much-needed dose of reality to the absurd situation. Section 3. Governor DeWine takes a stand, condemning the rumors and their perpetrators. The pet-eating rumor, no longer confined to the echo chambers of the internet and right-wing media, had reached the highest levels of Ohio State government, prompting a forceful response from Governor Mike DeWine. DeWine, a Republican who had previously steered clear of the controversy, recognized the danger posed by the spread of such a baseless and inflammatory claim. In a series of public statements and media appearances, DeWine condemned the pet-eating rumor as utter nonsense and a dangerous lie. He expressed his support for the Haitian community in Springfield, praising their contributions to the state and emphasizing that they, like all Ohioans, deserve to live free from fear and discrimination. DeWine reserved his harshest criticism for those who had originated and spread the rumor, accusing them of playing politics with people's lives. He called on elected officials, community leaders, and ordinary citizens alike to speak out against the misinformation and to defend the truth. DeWine's willingness to publicly denounce the rumor, even though it had been embraced by members of his own party, was a significant development. His stance, grounded in facts and principles, sent a clear message that the spread of misinformation would not be tolerated, regardless of political affiliation. Section 4. The press investigates media scrutiny exposes the lack of evidence. As the pet-eating rumor gained national attention, propelled by the pronouncements of Trump and Vance, Journalists and news organizations descended upon Springfield, Ohio, eager to separate fact from fiction. Armed with a healthy skepticism and a commitment to truth-seeking, these reporters embarked on a quest to uncover the origins of the rumor and to assess the validity of its claims. Local newspapers, often the eyes and ears of their communities, played a crucial role in debunking the misinformation. Reporters fanned out across Springfield, interviewing residents, community leaders, and law enforcement officials. They scoured police reports and public records, searching for any evidence to support the allegations of pet theft and consumption. Their findings were consistent and unequivocal. There was no evidence to support the claims made in the pet-eating rumor. 
No witnesses had come forward, no victims had been identified, and no credible evidence had emerged to suggest that such incidents had ever occurred. The rumor, it seemed, was nothing more than a figment of someone's imagination, amplified and exploited for political gain. National news organizations, drawn to the story by its bizarre nature and its implications for the national political landscape, soon joined the chorus of debunkers. Fact-checking websites and investigative journalism outlets published detailed analyses of the rumor, tracing its origins to the darkest corners of the internet and exposing the lack of evidence to support its claims. Section 5, J.D. Vance's shifting story, from rumor monger to architect of misinformation. As the pet-eating rumor unraveled, J.D. Vance faced a reckoning. The narrative he constructed now threatened to explode, exposing his judgment. Vance offered shifting explanations, initially doubling down on his claims. He insisted he had received reports but provided no evidence. Vance admitted he had not spoken to any victims or witnesses. He refused to release reports or provide details. In an interview, Vance suggested the truth was beside the point. He argued the rumor reflected broader truths about immigration. Trump's evasive defense hiding behind vague claims and shifting blame. Donald Trump, never one to shy away from a fight, even when faced with overwhelming evidence to the contrary, initially defended his repetition of the pet-eating rumor with his trademark bluster and defiance. He accused the media of being fake news and of engaging in a witch hunt against him and his supporters. When confronted with the lack of evidence to support his claims, Trump resorted to vague pronouncements and unsubstantiated assertions. He claimed to have seen reports about the pet-eating incidents on television, but he was unable to provide any specifics about where or when he had seen such reports. He suggested that the incidents were being covered up by the liberal media and that the truth was being suppressed. As the controversy grew, Trump attempted to distance himself from the rumor, claiming that he had merely been repeating what he had heard from others. He blamed J.D. Vance for misleading him and accused the media of taking his words out of context. Trump's attempts to evade responsibility for his role in spreading the pet-eating rumor were as predictable as they were disingenuous. He had built his political career on making outrageous claims, often without evidence, and then refusing to back down, even when those claims were demonstrably false. The pet-eating rumor for Trump was just another opportunity to sow division and to exploit fear and prejudice for political gain. The pet-eating rumor, despite its utter lack of basis in reality, had a lasting impact on the city of Springfield, Ohio, and its residents. The rumor, amplified by those in positions of power, exposed the dark undercurrents of fear, prejudice, and distrust that existed within the community. It highlighted the fragility of social cohesion and the ease with which misinformation can spread, particularly when it aligns with pre-existing biases. While the truth about the pet-eating rumor eventually emerged, thanks to the efforts of local authorities, journalists, and concerned citizens, the damage had been done. The Haitian community in Springfield, once a vibrant and growing part of the city's social fabric, had been unjustly maligned and subjected to suspicion and hostility. The rumor, like a virus, had infected the community, leaving behind a residue of fear and distrust that would take time and effort to heal. The Rise of Xenophobia – How Fear Becomes a Political Weapon The Springfield pet-eating rumor exposed a darker truth about American society – the persistence of xenophobia. This deep-seated prejudice can be easily inflamed by those seeking to exploit it for political gain. The rumor played on harmful stereotypes about immigrants, particularly from black and brown countries. The image of Haitians engaging in cannibalism tapped into deeply ingrained racist tropes. By portraying Haitians as inherently different, the rumor created fear and distrust. The political weaponization of fear is a tactic as old as politics itself. Section 3 the toxic alliance, extremist groups, and the spread of disinformation. The Springfield pet-eating rumor, while originating from a seemingly innocuous Facebook post, did not remain confined to the digital backwaters of social media for long. It was quickly seized upon and amplified by a network of extremist groups and individuals with a long history of promoting racist, anti-immigrant, and white supremacist ideologies. These groups, operating in the shadowy corners of the internet and on the fringes of society, saw in the pet-eating rumor an opportunity to advance their own hateful agenda. They recognized its potential to sow discord, to demonize immigrants, and to legitimize their own twisted worldview.
websites, forums, and social media accounts associated with white supremacist, neo-Nazi, and other extremist groups began promoting the rumor with alarming speed and efficiency. They presented it as evidence of a supposed invasion of white, Christian America by hordes of non-white, non-Christian immigrants who were intent on destroying the country from within. These groups used the pet-eating rumor to recruit new members, to incite violence against immigrants, and to spread their message of hate to a wider audience. They organized protests, rallies, and online campaigns, often using coded language and dog whistles to avoid detection and to appeal to those who might not otherwise be receptive to their message. The Springfield pet-eating rumor, in the hands of these extremist groups, became more than just a lie. It became a weapon, a tool of radicalization and recruitment, a catalyst for violence and hatred. Section 4 a community divided, the erosion of trust and social cohesion. The pet-eating rumor, while ultimately debunked, left a lasting scar on the social fabric of Springfield, Ohio. It exposed and exacerbated existing divisions within the community, eroding trust, fueling suspicion, and creating an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty. The rumor, with its implicit appeal to racial anxieties, created a wedge between Springfield's white residents and its growing Haitian community. Conversations that were once commonplace, exchanges of greetings and casual interactions became strained as the unspoken specter of the rumor hung in the air. The rumor also had a corrosive effect on relationships between Haitian immigrants and members of Springfield's African-American community. Some African-Americans, influenced by the pervasive stereotypes embedded within the rumor, found themselves questioning the behavior and intentions of their Haitian neighbors. Others, recognizing the rumor as a tool of division and oppression, spoke out against it, but the damage had been done. The erosion of trust and social cohesion is one of the most insidious consequences of misinformation and disinformation. When people lose faith in their neighbors, in their community leaders, and in the institutions that are supposed to protect them, they become susceptible to manipulation, exploitation, and violence. Section 5, Beyond Springfield, The National Implications of a Local Lie The Springfield pet-eating rumor, while seemingly a local story confined to a small Midwestern town, had implications that extended far beyond the city limits. It served as a stark reminder of the fragility of truth in the digital age, the vulnerability of immigrant communities to scapegoating and fear-mongering, and the willingness of some political actors to exploit prejudice for their own gain. The rumor, amplified by national media outlets and embraced by prominent political figures, became a touchstone in the ongoing national debate about immigration. It provided ammunition for those who sought to demonize immigrants, to portray them as a threat to American values and security, and to justify draconian policies aimed at restricting immigration and limiting the rights of immigrants. The rumor also highlighted the growing threat of misinformation and disinformation in the digital age. Social media platforms, with their vast reach and their tendency to amplify divisive content, had become powerful tools for spreading lies, manipulating public opinion, and undermining trust in democratic institutions. The Springfield pet-eating rumor, in its absurdity and its malicious intent, served as a wake-up call, a reminder that the fight for truth, justice, and equality is an ongoing struggle one that demands vigilance, critical thinking, and a willingness to speak out against hate and intolerance in all its forms. Section 2. Economic Revitalization, Haitian Entrepreneurship and Labor Haitian presence in Springfield has brought tangible economic benefits, revitalizing a city facing industrial decline. Haitian immigrants are valuable assets, contributing through hard work and entrepreneurial spirit. Haitian-owned businesses have proliferated, creating jobs and generating revenue. From restaurants to auto repair shops, these businesses energize the local economy. Haitian immigrants fill labor shortages in manufacturing and agriculture. Their contributions are essential to Springfield's economic well-being. Their presence attracts new businesses and investments, fostering economic growth. Section 3. Cultural Enrichment, the Vibrant Tapestry of Haitian Heritage Beyond the economic benefits, the Haitian community has enriched Springfield's cultural landscape, adding new colors, flavors, and rhythms to the city's social tapestry. 
Their presence has challenged long-held assumptions about culture and identity, expanding the horizons of Springfield's residents and creating a more vibrant and inclusive community. One of the most visible manifestations of Haitian culture in Springfield is the annual Haitian Flag Day celebration, a joyous occasion that brings together Haitians and non-Haitians alike to celebrate Haitian heritage music dance and cuisine. This colorful and lively event has become a beloved tradition in Springfield, a testament to the city's growing embrace of diversity and its appreciation for the contributions of its newest residents. Beyond large-scale events like Flag Day, Haitian culture has permeated Springfield's everyday life in subtle but significant ways. The sounds of Haitian music, the aromas of Haitian cuisine, and the vibrant colors of Haitian art and fashion have become familiar sights and sounds in the city, adding a touch of Caribbean flair to the Midwestern landscape. The presence of Haitian culture in Springfield has also fostered greater understanding and appreciation for Haitian history, language, and traditions. Schools have incorporated Haitian culture into their curricula libraries, have expanded their collections of Haitian literature, and community centers have offered language classes and cultural exchange programs. These initiatives have helped to break down stereotypes to build bridges of understanding and to create a more inclusive and welcoming community for all. The fragility of truth in the digital age. The Springfield pet eating rumor shows how fragile truth is in our hyper-connected world. The digital age spreads misinformation quickly, making lies take root in millions of minds. Social media algorithms prioritize engagement over accuracy, amplifying falsehoods. We need greater media literacy to critically evaluate information and recognize manipulation. Our democracy and shared reality depend on discerning, skeptical consumers of information. Section two, the high cost of political expediency. The Springfield pet eating rumor was a deliberate act of political opportunism, exploiting fear and prejudice for electoral gain. It erodes trust in our institutions and fuels cynicism. The decision to weaponize a lie is deeply damaging to our democracy. We must demand better from our elected officials, insist on a higher standard of political discourse. Section three, a call for vigilance combating xenophobia and misinformation. The Springfield pet eating rumor, while debunked, reminds us of the threat of xenophobia and misinformation. We must counter prejudice and build a just world where diversity is celebrated. Combating xenophobia requires confronting subtle biases in our language and policies, challenge stereotypes, educate ourselves, and build bridges of understanding. Combat misinformation by critically evaluating sources and supporting fact-checking. The fight against xenophobia and misinformation is a collective endeavor. Section four, the power of unity and understanding. In the aftermath of the pet-eating rumor, the city of Springfield faced a choice to succumb to the forces of division and suspicion that had been unleashed or to reaffirm its commitment to unity, understanding, and the values of a truly inclusive community. The city, to its credit, chose the latter path, embarking on a journey of healing, reconciliation, and the reaffirmation of its shared humanity. Community leaders, recognizing the urgent need to bridge the divides that had been exposed, organized a series of dialogues, workshops, and cultural exchange programs aimed at fostering greater understanding and empathy between Springfield's diverse communities. These initiatives provided a safe space for residents to share their experiences, to confront their biases, and to learn from one another. The Haitian community, despite being the target of such a vicious lie, responded with remarkable grace and resilience. They chose to meet hate with love, fear with understanding, and ignorance with education. They opened their homes and their hearts to their neighbors, sharing their culture, their stories, and their dreams for a better future. The process of healing and reconciliation was not easy, nor was it without its setbacks. The scars of the pet-eating rumor ran deep, and the work of rebuilding trust and understanding was ongoing. Yet, in the face of adversity, the people of Springfield demonstrated the transformative power of unity, the enduring strength of the human spirit, and the possibility of creating a more just and equitable world. Section five, Springfield's future. Embracing diversity, rejecting division. The Springfield pet eating rumor, for all the pain and division it caused, ultimately served as a catalyst for positive change. It forced the city to confront uncomfortable truths about itself, to acknowledge the persistence of prejudice and the fragility of social cohesion. It also, however, revealed the city's underlying strength, its capacity for empathy, and its commitment to building a more just and equitable future for all its residents. 
The experience, though painful, provided valuable lessons for Springfield and for communities across the nation grappling with similar challenges. It highlighted the importance of proactive efforts to promote inclusivity, to celebrate diversity, and to challenge prejudice and discrimination in all its forms. It also underscored the need for vigilance against misinformation, for a commitment to media literacy, and for the courage to speak out against hate speech and fear-mongering. The future of Springfield, like the future of our nation, depends on our ability to learn from the mistakes of the past, to embrace the richness of our diversity, and to build a society where truth, justice, and equality prevail. Let the story of Springfield serve as both a cautionary tale and a beacon of hope, a reminder of the fragility of truth, the high cost of division, and the enduring power of unity, understanding, and the unwavering pursuit of a more just and equitable world. For updates, please don't forget to like and subscribe.